Hello. Uh, so I think this lecture might be split up into certain, in like three sections, I think. Um, so I'm going to focus on three things from chapter six on the electronic structure of atoms. First thing I'm going to focus on is what is the electron. Um, it's a little more than just a negative particle in the atom. Uh, then I'm going to go over some orbital review and talk about, well, where is the electron located? And then the last thing I'm going to show you is calculation of energies involving the electron. Before we get to talking about what is this electron, there is some background information on waves you need to know because there's going to be some calculations involving waves. Um, so if you took physics, this should sound familiar. If you haven't taken physics, um, this is just a little bit of what you need to know. Um, so waves can be actually mechanical waves like if you tie a rope to the end of a string uh, sorry if you tie a rope to like a doorknob and you're shaking the rope up and down you see the waves uh, it could be waves to the ocean um, but most importantly for this unit it's electromag electromagnetic radiation which is light and that's actually uh, a type of wave a um, couple of things you need to know about waves is the wavelength and these are flipped i'm sorry but the wavelength is um, the distance between either the two peaks, I think the two crests of the waves, or the distance between two consecutive troughs of a wave. The frequency is, well, how many times this wave is passing through a certain, certain point. Um, frequency is given per second. So per second is second, oh, second to the minus one power. Okay, wavelength is going to be given in meters, which is M. Okay, so those are two background pieces of information to know about waves, what the frequency is and what the wavelengths are. So, as I said earlier, electromagnetic, electromagnetic radiation is wave, essentially light. So, all of these that you see up here, these are forms of light. You can go from radio frequency. This is the actual radios you listen to. Um, it's a type of electromagnetic magnetic radiation. Microwaves coming from your microwave. Infrared, this is heat coming off of your body. Um, the light you can see, it's a very small range. This is a visible, re uh, visible region of light. Ultraviolet, the stuff that, the rays that give you sunburns. X-rays, this is when you go if you break your bones and you get an x-ray, that's that type of electromagnetic radiation. And this is the most dangerous kind, gamma rays. This is, this is radiation coming off of um, exploding stars and such. So you can describe each of these waves with two pieces of information. One is the wavelength and one is the frequency. So if you notice your gamma rays, these are the most dangerous type of electromagnetic radiation. They have very small wavelengths. On the other hand, your radio frequencies are your least dangerous type of electromagnetic radiation, and they have very large wavelengths. So these are very long waves, whereas your gamma rays are super, super short little waves. Um, the shorter the waves, the smaller, the shorter the waves, the more often they are going to occur. The longer the waves, the less often they're going to occur. So this is about 10,000 times per second, and this is way more than 10,000 times per second. Okay, And why that relationship exists, it's because every single uh, electromagnetic radiation type travels at the speed of light. They travel at the exact same speed. So if they have very long wavelengths, then they aren't going to travel as uh, as often, or their frequency won't be that high. On the other hand, if they have very short wavelengths, then they're going to have very high frequency, because if you multiply the wavelength and the frequency, you should always get that number. Okay, So this is an equation that you're going to use later. So this is speed of light. Okay, So this is frequency, and this is wavelength. Okay, so remember wavelength is in meters, frequency is per second, and you'll see that the speed of light, the units are meters per second. Okay, so in AP Chem, it's really important for you to track your units.
So after that little bit about waves, then we can start talking about electrons. What are they? Are they waves, particles, or are they both? Um, they're actually both. There's been evidence found where electrons behave like waves and electrons behave like particles. So I'm going to go through the two main things you need to know. The main thing you need to know is what caused us to now theorize that electrons are like waves. Um, so on the left side, this is just regular waves, whether it be light waves, ocean waves, they're going to exhibit this kind of behavior. If you line up two waves, crest to crest, that's the top of the wave, crest to crest, they actually add up and produce a higher crest. That's the sum of these two crests. Or if you line up two troughs, then they're going to create a trough that's a sum of these two troughs. So you get constructive interference. You get a wave that is bigger at the end. On the other hand, if you line up two waves so that the crest matches up with the trough, or if a trough matches up with the crest, they end up canceling each other out. And that's called destructive interference. So this is seen with light and both ocean waves. Um, there was an experiment that was um, done called the double slit experiment. So if electrons behave like particles, then if you shoot the particles through two slits, then the hypothesis was, well, these particles are, are just going to go straight back and gather behind the two slits. But actually what was observed was this. Electrons were being shot through um, two slits and what they noticed was this banded pattern. So they saw constructive interference and they saw destructive interference. So where it was blank, that means the waves were somehow canceling each other out. And so this is one piece of evidence that kind of proves or shows that electrons behave like waves because they are exhibiting constructive and destructive interference when they're being shot through uh, this double slit right here. All right. Now we're going to look at the piece of evidence that showed electrons were like particles. And this is, uh, the experiment was called the photoelectric effect, and I believe Albert Einstein was the one that did this. And he essentially, he zapped a piece of metal with light rays. And so he was trying to see how electromagnetic radiation, which is light, interacts with atoms on that piece of metal. And what he noticed is if, depending on the type of light, he could show certain types of light, and that would cause electrons to eject. So actually, he noticed these particles, electron particles, being ejected um, from the piece of metal. So that's what led him to theorize that electrons were more particle light. I shoot light, electrons come off. Um, sometimes he noticed that there were frequencies of light that did not eject any electrons. So if you think about the photoelectron spectroscopy, if you don't zap the atom with enough energy, you're not going to eject all the electrons. So some of your weaker um, electromagnetic radiation, like uh, infrared or microwave or radio waves, those are probably not enough energy that will allow electrons to be ejected or emitted. Whereas if you have X-rays or gamma rays or sometimes UV rays, then those will be enough energy for electrons to be ejected off of a piece of metal. So using those pieces of information, the wavelength of light, the frequency of light, knowing that electromagnetic radiation travels at the same speed, at the speed of light, um, you can use that to calculate certain pieces of information. For example, if you have the frequency of light, you can use Planck's constant. By constant, it means it's always the same number, and it will be given to you, and it will help you figure out the relationship between the frequency of light and the amount of energy found in that light. Now, I want to specify that these two equations allow you to calculate for photons of light. Okay, one photon, one photon. You're going to see how that's important. All right. Those two equations actually tie into electrons. Um, so that's when we have to look at this emission spectrum. So if you just have regular light, they give us, they give off a continuous spectrum. So this is kind of like 
when there's a rainbow after the rain, the raindrops or the moisture that hangs in the air acts like a prism. The sunlight gets split up, passes through the droplets of water, and they get split up, and you see that rainbow, that continuous spectrum of color. Atoms do not produce that same pattern. So when you shine light, whether it be visible light, whether it be X-ray or UV light, you can get a particular emission spectrum depending on the type of element. So let's say we can shine light at uh, samples of helium, or this is hydrogen, I'm sorry, uh, at samples of hydrogen, and we see very discrete bands, very distinct bands of colors. Um, this is very characteristic for hydrogen. So you can shine light at any other kind of element and you will not get this exact same pattern. Or for something like neon, will produce this kind of emission spectrum. So this is very characteristic to neon. Another element will have will not have this exact uh, spectrum. And what this is caused by, this is caused by electrons absorbing energy and releasing energy. So electrons absorb energy, and when they release that energy, they're giving off very specific colors of light. And so all of this information can be used to do some calculations. So I'm going to show you a couple of problems that might or th that I have seen on the AP test. So it's let's practice one of them. Okay, so here is an example. Actually, I found this question or I found this diagram, um, but I changed the question. So you're, this is this is a me created question. Okay, um, so again, this these type of questions involve the amounts of energy either an electron can absorb or emit. And the energy that we're talking about comes from an electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so um, you're going to see information about electromagnetic spectrum. Um, since we are talking about electrons being ejected, you may see the PES show up again. So let's take a look at the problem and I'll work through how do I dissect this problem. So if you look at question A, what type of electromagnetic radiation is required to remove an electron from the p orbital of the valence shell. So that's a whole lot there. So what we need to do first is we need to figure out p orbital of the valence shell. So if we're looking at this electromag uh, this PES, we know that the highest amount of ionization energy refers to the 1s orbital. And because we're filling out electrons further out, we know the 1s orbital must be full. The next orbital up is our 2s orbital. The relative heights of the peaks are the same, so we know those must mean two electrons as well. After the 2s orbital, you have the 2p orbitals. And then if you read, they actually were nice. They give you little lines. One, two, three, four, five lines. So that's 2p5. Okay. And so we're going to remove an electron from this orbital here. And so now we have figured out where. Now we're going to look at the type of electromagnetic radiation. And what can help us with that is the amount of energy. So we know if we need to remove an entire mole of electrons, this is how much light energy we need. Okay? This is how much energy we need. But that gives us this piece of information. We need to find out frequency to help us figure out what type of light is required. Okay? And I realize I'm running out on time, so I may need to continue this video on the next one. Um, but the first thing that I want to do is this energy is per mole, 10 to the third kilojoules per mole. All of this information is per photon. So the first thing you need to do is find out per photon. So we're going to divide by the number of things in a mole. So if you have a mole of photons, then we have this many photons. And so I already did that calculation. That's going to be 2.79 times 10 to the 21st kilojoules per photon, okay? And that's actually coming up on 15 minutes, so I'm going to stop there.